I am not ashamed. Why did Moses appoint judges over the people? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Deuteronomy on Walking Through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 1. We're going to be reading from verses 9 to 18. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Deuteronomy chapter 1, beginning of verse 9. And I spoke to you at that time, saying, I alone am not able to bear you. The Lord your God has multiplied you, and here you are today as the stars of heaven in the multitude. May the Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times more numerous than you are and bless you as he has promised you. How can I alone bear your problems and your burdens and your complaints? Choose wise, understanding, and knowledgeable men from among your tribes, and I will make them heads over you. And you answered me and said, The thing which you have told us to do is good. So I took the heads of your tribes, wise and knowledgeable men, and made them heads over you leaders of thousands, leaders of hundreds, leaders of fifties, leaders of tens, and officers for your tribes. Then I commanded your judges at that time, saying, Here are the cases between your brethren, and judge righteously between a man and his brother, or a stranger who is with him. You shall not show partiality in judgment. You shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid in any man's presence, for the judgment is God's. The case that is too hard for you bring to me, and I will hear it. And I commanded you that at that time all the things which you should do. The children of Israel are across from Jericho in the plains of Moab. They will be situated here for the entirety of this book. Moses is giving them a retelling of the law, as the name Deuteronomy suggests. The book began with a short preamble before coming into the second section, which is an historical prologue. This prologue will continue through chapter 4. In verses 9 to 18, we have the history of Moses appointing judges. Way back in our study of Exodus, we read of this for the first time, so let's quickly go back and read the circumstances surrounding their appointment by reading Exodus chapter 18, verses 13 through 27. And so it was on the next day that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood before Moses from morning until evening. So when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did for the people, he said, what is this thing that you are doing for the people? Why do you alone sit and all the people stand before you from morning until evening? And Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have a difficulty, they come to me, and I judge between one and another. And I make known the statutes of God and his laws. So Moses' father-in-law said to him, The thing that you do is not good. Both you and these people who are with you will surely wear yourselves out. For this thing is too much for you. You are not able to perform it by yourself. Listen now to my voice. I will give you counsel, and God will be with you. Stand before God, stand before God for the people, so that you may bring the difficulties to God. And you shall teach them the statutes and the laws, and show them the way in which they must walk and the work they must do. Moreover, you shall select from all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all times. Then it will be that every great matter they shall bring to you, but every small matter they themselves shall judge. So it will be easier for you, for they will bear the burden with you. If you do this thing, and God so commands you, then you will be able to endure, and all this people will also go to their place in peace. So Moses heeded the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. So they judged the people at all times, the hard cases they brought to Moses, but they judged every small case themselves. Then Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way to his own land. In Exodus 18, Israel had not long been out of Egypt. Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, who himself was a priest in Midian, saw, that Mo saw what Moses was doing and inquired of Moses why he was doing it. Moses' response was basically, These people don't know the law. Only I know the law. So if they need to inquire of God, they need to come to me. Jethro rightly concluded that such would tire Moses out, not to mention 
not be sustainable, for Moses wouldn't live forever, and when he died, who then would be able to judge the people? Thus, I believe with God's inspiration, Moses was instructed to select judges among the tribes, people who feared God, stood for truth, ones who hated covetousness, and ones who would judge impartially and teach these people the law, so that they could judge the day-to-day -day matters of the people, thus freeing up Moses to do other things that God had commanded him. One of those things is that if a case was too hard for the judges, then and only then would Moses come to be the final arbiter. We saw this happen concerning the man who gathered sticks on the Sabbath in Numbers 15. So Moses now has provided the second generation of Israel who came out of Egypt the history of how they obtained their judges. Over the next two lessons, we'll cover Moses' retelling of the history from Mount Sinai to Kadesh the first time. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 19 to 25, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.